Hello everyone, welcome to Split Second. My name is Cicada and today I'll be taking you through our EDH monthly special. This month our theme is Guild Chase, a combination of plane chase cards with two colored commanders. To make sure we play into the plane chase, we made it compulsory to roll the planner die at least once during each of our turns. Before starting, we at Split Second want to thank everyone for your constant support and suggestions on all social media. You can continue to support us by sharing and liking this video, subscribing if you haven't yet, or by becoming a patron. We'd also like to remind you guys to try and support your local game stores by buying MTG products there. Help keep your store alive! Finally, while the current global situation continues, we will be providing everyone with high-quality digital gameplay rather than paper magic. Now it's time to get into the fun. This week, I'm piloting my build for a combo slash aggro Rakdos Lord of Riots. Luis Brandão with one of the stack lords, Brago. Our friend and guest, Diego Livner, is playing his Tatiova deck. And finally, Bali is running a Meren build based on Pau 2's list. Let's check our starting hands. Luis is starting this week. He has two lands, Arid Mesa to fix his missing blue mana and snow-covered planes. Thought Vessel can ramp him, while the Graph Digger's Cage could prove useful against the Meren player. Trinus Fury is excellent to stopping me from having over-the-top turns from Rakdos as well. Finally, Enlightened Tutor can be used to get anything from combo pieces to more hate. Force of Negation could prove vital to interacting with us should Luis find the blue card to exile. Livna's hand seems pretty okay. He has a basic island, forest and reliquary tower. He can use Sakura Tribe Scout to ramp him or get extra value from Tatiova later in the game. At the same time, Coiling Oracle and Rissic Study can provide card advantage. Zuran Orb can be used to abuse something like a Splendid Reclamation later on. Bal's hand could mean some hard decisions. He has a basic swamp and forest. Greenstone Zenith and Chrome Mox could both be used for ramping, although the Zenith might also find better uses if Bal's mana comes to him at a steady pace. Disciple of the Vault is a combo piece, Abrupt Decay a solid interaction card, and Orin Frost Fang is great for card advantage should Bal find the creatures to abuse it. My hand's pretty decent. I have Command Tower, Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth and Graven Karns as my lands. Sol Ring is excellent ramp. Both Robber of the Rich and Azra Oddsmaker can get me a few cards while I look for a way to cast a cheaper Kozilek the Great Distortion thanks to my Rakdos. From then on, I could try and look for ways to win the game. It's time to get this special up and running. We start the game inside the Furnace Layer. On Luis's upkeep, it triggers and hits me. I discard a Robber of the Rich. Then, Luis plays a Windswept Heath and rolls an unsuccessful Planner Die. With that, we go to Leibner's turn. On Leibner's upkeep, the Furnace Layer triggers once again, but this time it burns Luis's hand. He discards a Graph Digger's Cage, which is a pretty sweet card to have against the Marin deck. Leibner then plays a Pasic Forest and casts a Sakura Tribe Scout. He rolls a Planner Die and we Planeswalk into Prov, with no immediate effects to be worried about. Leibner casts a Zuran Orb just in case before passing to Bal. Bal also plays a basic forest, however, he follows it up with a freshly drawn Mana Crypt setting himself ahead. Finally, Bal casts a Chrome Mox and we are all starting to see the turn 1 Meron coming. He exiles Disciple of the Vault, giving us some clues about the deck in the process, namely its Ulk Piles, and casts his commander on turn 1. Bal then rolls the Planner Die and hits Nefalia, which benefits his deck a lot. At the beginning of Bal's end step, he resolves the Nefalia trigger before Marin's milling 7 cards. Elves of Deep Shadow, Arbor Elf and Phyrexian Delver all hit Bal's graveyard and he randomly returns the Elves of Deep Shadow to his hand with Nefalia. He also returns the Phyrexian Delver with Marin. That's a lot of value. On my turn, I play a Command Tower and ramp up a bit with Sol Ring. I roll once and fail. I use the Sol Ring to pay for another roll because I have nothing else to do with my mana and I need us to flee this plane. I hit Chaos, returning the Robber of the Rich back into my hand. Going to my end step, Nefalia triggers and I mill 7 cards. I randomly return an Arid Mesa back into my hand. Luis cracks his fetch for a tapped Hallow Fountain before starting his turn. Luis plays the Snow Covered Plains before casting a Thought Vessel. He rolls the planner die and we move into the feeding grounds. That's a lot of planeswalking so far. 
However, this plane benefits everyone but Luis, so he tapped his thought vessel to try and get out. He is not successful. It's now Libna's turn. He taps the scout, putting an island into play, and then plays another island from his hand. Liebner then casts a Rhystic Study to try and get some value out of the game, before rolling the planet die and we're planeswalking again. This time into the Grand Ossuary. Just by the name, we're fairly sure it might benefit the Marin deck. Then again, the fact that the Chaos exiles our creatures is pretty terrifying, especially to Bal. Liebner passes. Bal rolls for the Crypt and loses. He rolls the planner die once and nothing comes out. Afraid of dumping creatures on the board and getting them all exiled, he pays one to roll again without any effect. He then casts Abrupt Decay to stop Liebner from getting value from the Rhystic Study, making him sad in the process and paying for the trigger. Bal plays a basic forest and Elves of Deep Shadow. Afraid to commit to the board with his plane around, Bal goes to his end step, returning the Arbor Elves back into his hand. On my turn, I play an Arid Mesa and crack it for a basic mountain just in case the Braga player has any funny ideas. I roll the free die once and then pay one to roll again. Without any luck though, I cast an Azra Oddsmaker because he's my biggest boy should someone roll Chaos for this plane, and he's also pretty decent card advantage. Luis plays an Arid Mesa, cracking it for a Tundra and reducing my terror of back to basics. He rolls before casting his Brago, just in case it happens to hit Chaos. Nothing happens, so Luis pops his commander in and passes. Liebner untaps and rolls the planner die first. He hits the phenomenon plane wide disaster, which triggers. Liebner responds to the trigger by generating one blue mana with one of his islands. Then, he taps the scout and puts a Simic Growth Chamber into play, bouncing his tapped land. Finally, the phenomenon resolves and Bal gains one experience counter while everyone else sighs and lets their creatures die. We planeswalk into the Zephyr Maze. Liebner plays his land for turn, an island. He then casts Coiling Oracle, revealing Kodama's reach and putting it into his hand. He then passes to Bal, not too upset about the progress of the game so far. Bal rolls for the crypt successfully. He then plays a swamp and rolls the planner die. Nothing happens. Seeing as it seems safe, Bal plays his Marin and goes to the end step, returning Elves of Deep Shadow back to his battlefield. It's as if nothing happened. With that, he passes to me. I play an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth. I roll for the planner die, not getting any results out of it. I then get to rolling once more since I have mana to spare, once again failing. I cast my Tectonic Giant, which is pretty nice in this deck, before passing. Luis plays a Misty Rainforest. He rolls the planner die with no results and thus passes to Libner, fully untapped and ready to bop us with interaction. Diego starts his turn by rolling the planner die, not getting anything out of it. Then he slams Tatiova onto the battlefield. He plays an island, triggering her for one life and one draw before passing to Ba. So far, a peaceful game. Ba loses the creep roll on his turn. He casts a demonic tutor and Luis asks where we think it's going which suggests he might not have counter spells that hit creatures. I tell him it's either for Protean Ulk or some flashback Marauder effect because my giant probably intimidates him. Luis thinks for a bit, but lets it resolve. Bal gets himself a Playcrafter and he casts it immediately. My call was correct. The giant gets sacrificed, Luis discards a Trinity Sphere, Liebner sacrifices his Coiling Oracle, and Bal allows his own Playcrafter to hit the graveyard for a second experience counter. Before rolling the planner die, Bal casts Grim Flayer, which has Delirium, but Marin's trigger will remove his only creature from his graveyard. Bal doesn't get a relevant planner roll. He goes to his end step and gets the Playcrafter back to his hand once again. I play a Graven Kearns, a bit annoyed at being unable to get my creatures to stick. I roll the planner die, but we're still lost in the Zephyr Maze. I cast Cloudstone Curio to check how people react, seeing as it's a combo piece. I move forward and cast Robber of the Rich. I attack Luis, who exiles a Mentor of the Meek. And so I just pass the turn. Luis plays a Cavern of Souls naming Spirit. He rolls for the planner die, not getting any results and then casts Grasp of Fate. Liebner lets Tatiova get exiled while Bal prefers to play it safe and moves Meran to the command zone. I lose the Curio in this process as well, but it's currently nowhere near relevant to my game plan. We go to Liebner's start of the turn. He casts Cyclonic Rift onto the Grasp of Fate and Luis lets it resolve. 
Tatiova and Cloudstone Curio return to their respective owners. Leibner casts Kodama's Reach to get some value out of Tatiova. He puts a forest in play, triggering his commander. Then he plays a Reliquary Tower, Tatiova triggers once again. Leibner rolls the Planner die once and nothing comes out of it. So he uses some spare mana to roll it again but without any effect. Then he passes. Balscript keeps its steady 50-50 ratio. He rolls the Planner die and misses, so now it just feels like we're stuck for good in this place. Bal casts his play crafter because Tatiova is getting pretty menacing. Bal sacrifices the crafter, I sacrifice the robber, Luis discards the force of negation and Leibner lets Tatiova go back to the command zone. Grimflayer's Delirium is once again online. Bal attacks Luis with the Grimflayer mostly because I'm ridiculously behind and Leibner just gains too much life for the Grimflayer to be relevant. The flayer connects and Bal mills Lanoar elves while reorganizing the other two cards. He casts a Caustic Caterpillar and passes to me. I play a Verdant Catacombs and crack it for a Badlands since Luis isn't really invested in the non-basic land hate. I'm tired of this plane. I roll the Planet Die for a fail. I retry and hit Chaos so I'm forced to give Bal's Caterpillar flying until end of turn. I try one last time and get nothing. Because Bal is close to recasting Marin and I don't want to get my creatures locked in play crafter rotations, I decide now is the time to cast the Shattering Spree I've been holding on to. This will also send Luis back one turn and I'm sure Leibner doesn't have Zeran Orb just because it's fun to sacrifice lands. I'm also hoping this motivates Bal to eventually kill my Curio rather than my Sol Ring just considering I have a spell in my hand that specifically needs the ring to be cast. Luis simply draws and casts Ethereum Sculptor. He only has 3 cards in hand so maybe it's not enough to push him forward yet. He does not succeed with the Planar Die. Leibner starts the turn with another unsuccessful Planar Die roll. He recasts Tatiova. He plays an untapped breeding pool triggering the Merfolk Lady. Then he casts a Sylvan Safekeeper which we all react to quite negatively. He passes to Baal. Baal starts with the Planar Die roll once more. It fails, we're still stuck. He goes to combat, attacking Luis with his Grim Flayer once again. He does not mill anything. On his second main phase, Bal casts Sylvan Library. Card advantage at last. He passes to me. On my turn, I roll the Planet Eye and we're finally out of this horrible plane. We walk right into the Grove of the Dream Pots, which everyone's pretty terrified about with me having the larger creatures. However, my deck also has a bunch of small ones, such as the Goblin Crater Maker I just hit. I cast Oblivion Sower, targeting Leibner and getting a forest and an exotic orchard. Decent ramp. Bal lets me trigger the Curio, so I return the Goblin to my hand. I recast the Goblin and, before I can ramp anymore with my huge 5-8 on my turn, Bal uses the Caterpillar to destroy the Curio in response to my cast. I decide to roll for the Planet Eye with my untapped mana because I doubt Luis is going to do anything groundbreaking during his turn. Finally, I pass to him. Luis reveals a spell seeker to the Grove. He gets himself a Mother the Mixture for its versatility and rolls the Planet Die. He gets a Chaos Roll, but it's only useful if you can reanimate a creature in your graveyard, which is not the case. Luis passes to Liebner. Liebner gets an Oracle of Moldaya with the Grove, which is pretty good considering his position right now. He plays Wooded Foothills from his hand, drawing Flooded Strand and then plays a Strand, drawing a Fabled Passage. He cracks a Strand for an Island, drawing a Lay Weaver and the Foothills for a Forest, drawing an Interland Harbor. He casts Search for Ascanta. Not too thrilled about me potentially getting some large creatures, Leibner rolls the Planet Die three times, but all of them result in nothing. He passes to Baal. On his upkeep, the Grove of Dream Pods gives Baal a Collector Oof. Me and Luis grunt. He then loses 4 life to the Sylvan Library. Bal doesn't get anything out of the Planar Die. He casts a Green Sun Zenith to search his library. I'm guessing it's probably a Priest of Titania when Luis asks about it. We all pass priority and I'm right. The Priest enters the battlefield and the Zenith goes back to the owner's library. Bal moves to combat and keeps that Luis pummeling on point. He mills two basic forests and casts Arbor Elf before passing. On my upkeep, I hope for Bigger Boy and instead get a Magus of the Moon, effectively shutting down all my black mana. At least I have green mana on Rakdos. Luis is also not very happy about the card. I attack Libna with the Sower and Luis with the Crater Maker because why not? 
I roll us out of the dream pods and into Naya. Leibner celebrates immediately, but I'm not about to let this happen. I re-roll the planet die once, twice, three times, and third time is the charm. Our guest isn't super happy, but we are now on the stairs to infinity. Ironically though, I just rolled four planet dies and missed some drawing cards with the stairs. I pass to Luis. Luis starts by rolling the planet die, drawing a card, but getting nothing relevant from the roll. He re-rolls and draws another. He tries once again and once again nothing happens besides a nice draw. He plays a mountainous mistress workshop and casts a soul ring for free before passing. Leibner search for Ascanta triggers and he transforms into a fancy mountain after keeping a Crozen Grip on the top of his library. We go to his main phase. Leibner floats 11 mana. Then he sacrifices them all with the Sylvan Safekeeper, piling Shroud onto Tatiova and keeping only the Ascanta on the board in case he needs to protect his Safekeeper. Leibner plays a forest, drawing a card, tapping it and sacrificing it to give Shroud to Oracle of Muldaya. Then he plays his Interland Arbor, drawing again, tapping for red and sacrificing it to give the Safekeeper Shroud. He proceeds to cast Splendid Reclamation and recovering all his lands. Leibner proceeds to cast a Ponder, looking for a way to end the game this turn. He shuffles and draws an island from it. Leibner follows it up with an Eternal Witness, but rather than the Reclamation, he picks up the Cyclonic Rift because it doesn't have any outlet to win and he won't have the mana to close the game. Leibner rolls the Planet Die, drawing a Noxious Revival. He casts Preordain, drawing Wayward Swartooth, which he casts. He gets the City's Blessing. Leibner plays yet another island, triggering Tatiova. He rolls the Planet Die for one last roll. I consider killing Baal's Priest of Titania, but he says he is now focused on trying to remove Tatiova. Since I'm seeing his Toxic Deluge in his graveyard, but Leibner is a problem, I choose not to use the Crater Maker. Baal loses 4 life to the library again to keep an extra card. We're all talking about our options now to try and get us out of this mess. I mentioned that I saw Leibner draw a Pact of Negation with a Reclamation, and Luis mentions the possibility of transmuting the Muddle the Mixture for a Winter Orb to kill Leibner if he tries to Pact our interaction. Baal casts an Orin Frost Fang to dig deeper. He attacks me with his Collector Roof so that I can take it out with the Magus and unlock two players, while Luis is hit by the Grim Flayer once again. He first uses the Flayer's Trigger to mill his own Sylvan Safekeeper and two lands, and then draws from the Frost Fang. With our lands being useful again, Bal rolls for the Planet Die, drawing another card. He then plays a Gaius Cradle and uses it to cast a Protein Oak, placing himself as a threat along Leibner. Joy! On my turn, I roll the die and draw a card. I go to combat, attacking Luigi with both creatures and hoping that maybe he'll take it. However, Luis jump blocks my Oblivion Sower with his Ethereum Sculptor, only taking 2 damage. I cast Rakdos, Lord of Riots. Only took 8 turns. I cast Disciple of Bolas, sacrificing the Oblivion Sower to draw 5 cards and gain 5 life, and maybe get something relevant to do. I play a Mox Diamond, discarding if near Deadlands. I tap the Mox, pay 6 life, and cast Crick. I lose 2 life and cast Mind Blade Render, triggering Crick. With nothing more to do, I go to my end step and Luis flashes his Avon Mind Sensor. Leibner responds with a Mystical Tutor. He puts a Crop Rotation on the top of his library, Bal then responds with a recently drawn Plunge into Darkness to sacrifice his Ulk in response. Not too happy that he had to bin out his Sylvan Safekeeper while looking for responses for Leibner. He couldn't win because of Crater Maker being able to kill his Malira, Bal gets Karen Feather and Viscera Seer as well as a Body Snatcher. Body Snatcher triggers, entering the battlefield, and Bal responds by sacrificing it to Karen Feather. Body Snatcher triggers, targeting the Protean Ulk. I respond by paying 2 life and getting 1 red mana to cast Terminate on the Karen Feather. He responds and uses Viscera Seer to scry the top card of his library, which he keeps. I then use my last mana to activate Crater Maker and kill this other sack outlet, Viscera Seer. The Snatcher gets exiled and the Ulk reanimated. After this awesome stack, Avon Mind Sensor enters the battlefield. On his upkeep, Luis casts Enlightened Tutor, checking for Leibner's reaction. With only the Pact in his hand, Leibner prefers not to risk dying. He gets himself a Winter Orb. Then, Luis rolls for the Planet Die, drawing a card. He taps the Workshop for a Winter Orb and it resolves. With a lot of careful consideration, Luis decides to pass his turn. 
Libner untaps the Simic Growth Chamber. He plays a basic island, triggering Tatiova. He plays Mystic Sanctuary, triggering the land, but choosing not to use the trigger. He rolls the planar die, getting Chaos, and sending the plane Bant to the bottom of the planar deck. With that, he passes. Bal untaps his creatures and a single swamp. He plays a Bloodstained Mire. He casts a Phyrexian Delver, saying his plan is to use the Hulk for value. Limna responds with Cyclonic Rift only on the Hulk, keeping untapped green mana to deal with Luisa's Winter Orb later on. Bal uses his floating mana and Bloodstained Mire to cast a Prankist Necromancer. Then he goes to combat, attacking Luis once more with his Green Flayer. He mills a land and Okame adversary and draws a card from the Frostfang. Bal rolls the planar die, drawing another card and passing. Because we're exhausted at this point, I did miss one trigger from the Mind Blade render due to the Grim Flayer being a warrior. On my turn, I untap a command tower and every other non-land permanent. I attack Leibner with Rakdos and Luis with Mind Blade render and Crick. It's a total of 11 damage for Rakdos. I gain life from Crick and lose one and draw from the Mind Blade render. I cast a free Conduit of Ruin, searching my top 4 cards and shuffling them. I cast a Vampiric Tutor for the top 4 as well, selecting one. Crick triggers. Then I cast Kozilek the Great Distortion, drawing 4 cards. I play a Bloodstained Mire, still looking for the way out. I roll the Planet Eye, drawing another card and once again not getting us out. I cast Loyal Subordinate with Phyrexian Mana, triggering Crick. I cast Ancestral Statue, triggering it. Bal minds the table that I could recast Kozilek, but I remind them I don't have the means. Sol Ring is tapped. The statue resolves and I return Disciple of Bolas. I pay 2 life to cast it, triggering Crick. I sacrifice Kozilek to draw 12 cards and gain 12 life, trying to mimic Libner's best turn so far while digging for a win or some way to stop Bal and Libner. I cast Void We Know Her because now I have options and want to cut the other players out of interacting with me. It resolves, so I follow it up with Ulamog the Infinite Gyre and use it to get rid of the Aven Mind Sensor. I cast Diabolic Intent, paying 2 life and sacrificing the Loyal Subordinate. Creek triggers and Libner responds with Swan Song. I respond with Red Elemental Blast. My intent resolves. I get myself a Razaketh to access most of my deck thanks to Crick. I cast Razaketh, losing 6 life and triggering the other Black Lord. My opponents can't interact with even costed spells because of Void We Know Her, so they must let it resolve. I sacrifice Ancestral Statue, losing 2 more life and getting myself a Deflecting Swat. Then, I sacrifice the Ulamog, shuffling my graveyard back into my library and getting a Myogen of Knight's Reach. Finally, I use Razaketh to get rid of the Mind Blade Render for Ancestral Statue. I sacrifice the Disciple of Bolas for Purphorus, God of the Forge, and I'm set to win. I cast the Myogen of Knight's Reach with Crick, triggering him. I remove the Divinity Counter to discard my opponent's hands. Then, after getting rid of my opponent's interaction, I cast Perforus, God of the Forge, and I can cast Bounce and recast Ancestral Statue, killing my opponents. Thanks for following us through this match everyone, Rakdos plane shifted towards victory. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons and especially Izanagi, Carneiro, Troy, Stefan, TJ Rapp, Mike Purr, Ajimo, and Illegal, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing or becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander Adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH related matters, join us on Discord. Come with us again next week for a new set of Commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!